everyone in this video we're going to be going over exactly how to set up recursive workflows in your bubble application now a recursive workflow is one that schedules itself to run again and in the wider programming world we call this a loop we use this when we want to perform actions on Lisp, as an example and while there are other methods for processing lists such as scheduling on a list or making changes to a list of things these options do have a limitation because their performance can decrease as their list size gets really large or they can time out if the list size is really big. Now this video is based on this article in our functionality reference which goes over exactly how to set up recursive workflows and it's linked in the description below this video. In this video we're going to go over an example where we have a list of products, say that we have around 200 products and we actually want to reprice these products and increase the price of each product by $10. And to do so, we need to set up a recursive workflow um, in the backend workflow section of our bubble application. So the first step that we need to do is we need to go to our settings tab. We need to go to our API section here and then we need to make sure that this box is ticked. Enable Workflow API and Backend Workflows. We'll then go to this section and go to Backend Workflows and click Backend Workflow. Now what I need to do is I need to create a new API workflow. And the one I want to create here is I'm just going to call it Update Products. I'm going to uncheck this box as I don't want to expose this as a public API workflow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a number of parameters. The first parameter I want to create is index, which is number. I then want to create count, which I want to be set to number. And then I also want to create product, which I'm going to set to product. And I'm going to set it to a list. So it's going to be a list of products. So to go over this in a little bit more detail of what these actually mean, the way a recursive workflow or a backend workflow that we are creating and setting up right now, the way that it works is that we want to provide it a list of products. So these 200 products we want to provide to this API workflow. And then what we want to do is we want to go through every single product one by one and reprice it. And once we've repriced product one, for example, we want to call the API workflow again and we want to tell it reprice product two and then reprice product three and reprice product four and these parameters support that. So for example here, the index, we're going to use this index to keep track of what product we're currently making a change to. So in this way, we'll only be making a change to one product at a time. Then we have the count, which is storing the total number of products that we want to iterate over, so 200 products. And we use this so that we can calculate an exit condition. So when do we actually end the recursive workflow, which is when we hit the number 200 with our index. So we know, hey, our entire list has been updated. And then finally, we have the key of product. So this is our list of things which we want to make a change to. So we need to provide that entire list. So right now we have the API workflow of update products. And the first thing that I need to do here is I need to create this workflow. So what I want to do is I want to do make changes to a thing and I want to set that to product. I then want to set it to item number and I want it to be indexed. So every time this workflow runs, we tell it to change product, which is a list of products, but then we tell it to change actually change product item number index. So product item number one, item number two, item number three, so on and so forth. Then what I want it to do is I want it to update the price of the product. So I'll say the price of this product is this product's price plus $10. And then I also want to add in an updated time and I'll set it to current date or time. The reason why I do this and the reason why I like adding an updated time is that it just gives me an additional verification point. So just say if there's something wrong that happens with our workflow, which is unlikely to happen, but if it does, I can always go into the database and just quickly check 
hey, was this particular product actually updated? So having an updated time just is really useful for me in that way. Next, what I need to do is I need to make this workflow recursive. So right now we've set it up so that we can make a change to one product. We want it to call itself and make a change to the next product on that list. So the way that we do that is we schedule an API workflow. We get it to call itself. We'll set it to current date and time. And then we'll set the index to the index that we have, but then we'll add one. So if the index was one, the next time we'll call will be the index two, and then the index three, index four. And that means that this number is changing so that the product that's being updated is changing. The count will be the same because we have the same number of products and we want to provide the exact same list of products. It's really important now to add a conditional so the condition I want to add is when the index is less than the count. So we only want to schedule this API workflow when the index is less than the count. So when the index is one and the count is 200, we call it again. So the index goes up to two and we do this all the way up to 199. So when it goes to 199, it's less than the count. The index will bump up to 200. It'll call itself and then it'll be like, all right, we don't need to call itself because we've hit that upper limit. We've hit and updated all 200 products. What I really like to do at this point is I also like to send an email. So I'll set this email to be sent when the index is equal to the count and I'll just pop in the email address. And what I usually like to say is, hi, all the products have been repriced. And then I'll be recursive workflow update products has been completed. So I just like having this email so that I know that this workflow has been run successfully. It's gone through all 200 items. Next, what we need to do is we need to schedule this particular workflow. I'm going to go to this page here. I'm going to go to the product. I'm going to go to the page product here. And then I have a button here, which is update products, which I can click. And then I want to schedule an API workflow, which is going to be update products. I'm going to schedule it at the current date and time. I want to set the index to one because when I'm starting it up, I want it to be one. Then I want to search for the products that I want to reprice. So that's going to be products. And I only want to reprice a certain number of products. So they're going to be products which are priced less than $50. So any product that's priced less than $50, I want to actually increase the price by $10. And what I will do now is I will also provide the search for products count. So I want the total number of products to be provided here. So that's a exactly how to set up a recursive workflow. Something that I do really want to quickly highlight is what occurs if you do not have this conditional. So if you do not have this conditional, this workflow will continuously keep running and keep on calling itself because you don't have any exit condition. And what that's called is an infinite loop. When this occurs, what we can do is we can go to the logs. We can go to this tab, the scheduler, and then we can click search. And this will come up with all the API events which are scheduled in the future. Over here in the API event, it will come up with update products. And then here, there'll be a button to cancel that workflow. And we can cancel that workflow and escape the infinite loop that we find ourselves in. And if this occurs in the live environment, don't forget to switch to the live environment and then cancel the schedule workflows there. So I hope that this video has given you a better understanding of exactly how to set up recursive workflows.
If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below this video. So I hope that this video has given you a better understanding and overview of exactly what a recursive workflow is. If you have any questions regarding this video, please feel free to leave a comment below.